All right, so we're talking about the range, and I think domain and range get so much, so many times confused with students when we're talking about functions. And remember, you know, when we're talking about domain, domain is all the values that you can input into your function, and the range is going to be your output. Output. Now, when we are graphing the sine and cosine functions, we like to use the unit circle a lot to help us evaluate for sine and cosine. So let's go and take a look at our unit circle because those were the values more often that we used to, eva to uh, graph our function. So what we did is our input values were what we call you know, our angles that we used. You know, we used our angle 0, we used pi over 4, pi halves. 3 pi over 4, and pi. And we plug those values into our graphs of sine and cosine to be able to find the output value. Now it's important to remember to remember when using the unit circle, the radius that we have is 1, right? So therefore, when we look at like the coordinate points, all right? So when you're like plugging in, you know, the coordinate points, the maximum distance that a point can be from the center is 1, right? Because there are radius is 1. And we had different points, you know, square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. Uh, you know, when you use like pi over 3 or pi, or pi over 6, you have, you know, 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. But none of those numbers were larger than 1, right? The maximum distance that any point on the unit circle is from the center is 1. All right. So remember, range is going to be dealing with you know what are the maximum and the minimum values of your output value. So by looking at the unit circle, we can say, oh, well, that value is going to be from 1 to negative 1. As we look right here, this distance is even 1, but the lowest distance it goes down to is negative 1. As we go a maximum value of 0, comma 1 and a minimum value of 0, comma negative 1. Now let's real quick go and graph our functions and determine again our range. So I'm just going to kind of quickly graph the sine function and the cosine function. So in graphing these, remember when we looked at the paragraph, we said the initial or the graph is going to start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, ends at 2 pi, but it goes up to its maximum, then it intercept, down to the minimum, and back up. And the cosine graph, we said started at 1, and these aren't the best because I'm just trying to make it real quick here. These are my two paragraphs. And what we notice, remember, these values, like we said on the unit circle, if this was my value at pi halves, right? So the cosine value at pi halves, the, max, the output value of my pi halves for sine, which is the y value, which is 1. At 3 pi halves, the minimum value is negative 1. That means you can see this graph is contained between a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of y. And those values are on the y-axis. And when we're talking about range, we're talking about what are the output values that are going to be a part of your graph. What are the maximum and the minimum? You can notice my y values, my output values, don't go higher than 1 or lower than 1. And it's the same thing for the cotangent function. If you evaluate at cotangent of 0, you have 1 comma 0. And when you evaluate cotangent at, at pi, you have negative 1 comma 0. So this graph does not go above pi or below pi. Therefore, what we do is we say the range is for these two functions is going to be contained between negative 1 and 1. All right? Or we could also say you know, sometimes negative 1 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the range of your sine and cosine graph. Thanks.